Okay, so what we need to do is we need to provide a way for the designers to add as many areas as they want to our top system. Okay, so to do that, we need to take advantage of multi-parms inside of our HDA. All right, so it's not overly obvious how to actually create these when you open up the type properties window, but what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the process here. All right, so let's jump back into Houdini and take a look. Okay, so let's uh, actually open up the type properties here for our top network. And what I want to do is I want to add a new folder here. And we're going to make this collapsible. And I'm going to call this areas. And what we want to do is we want to add another folder here. Okay, underneath this. And this folder is going to actually be our multi-parm. All right, we're going to turn it into a list of a type of input. Okay, and so to do that, uh, first, I'm going to name this. So we're going to call this our area uh, folder. Or actually, we're going to call this our area list. Okay, this is our areas folder. And I'm gonna, just going to call this our areas for the label. That might be confusing. We'll call this areas lists or area HDAs. How about that? There we go. All right. So what we need to do is we actually need to change this from tabs to a multi-parm block list like that. Okay, and what we're going to do inside of this particular multi-parm block list is we're going to put in a SOP input or an operator path. Okay, so it'll take in SOPs or HDAs. All right, and what we need to do is we actually need to give this a name. All right, so this name is going to be called uh, areas asset, like so. And we'll just call this area. Cool. All right, so everything else is uh, all set up nicely here. Okay. And what this will do, uh, we'll hit accept and actually test this out inside of Unity now. So I'm going to accept that, and I'm just going to uh, save the node. Uh, we can also take a look at it here inside of Houdini really quick, but I do want to test it. So you can see that this areas now has this block list in it, and we can go and add as many areas as we want. And they're all SOPs, or an HDA, inside of uh, the Houdini engine. Okay, so let's go and uh, save this one more time. And I'm going to switch over to my folders again. And let's just drag over our top network. So here's our level creation top. And let's put that into our tops folder. Just overwrite the old one. And jump back into Unity. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild the asset here. And right off the bat, we get this areas drop down. And look at that. We can actually start to assign new HDAs to all this. So each one of these can be an HDA and we can add our input objects to all this. We can add as many areas as we want. All right. You can also add as many HDAs as you want. So really good way to manage all this stuff. And it, it allows us to give the level designers the ability to assign as many HDAs as they want. So let's just go and assign this one. So this is our area generator here. Cool. All right. So with that, we need to set up a little bit more inside of our top network so that way when we import all these areas into our particular top network uh, they're all merged together into a single file okay so let's go jump back into houdini and take a look at that okay so here we are back inside of houdini and let's get this all importing the actual areas okay so uh, to set ourselves up a nice little test what i'm going to do is add an area to this particular list and since we already have one created here, our temp or our test area generator, our HDA, um, what I'm going to do is just assign that to our particular new list item there. Say accept. All right. So what we're looking for is uh, we need to get this path. All right. And if I were to have multiple of these particular areas in here, I need to get the path for all of them. Okay. And so to do that, we need to set up the top nodes in a particular way. So. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to basically put the wedge node in between here because we're going to need to flatten the, the height field. All right. And we're also going to need to get rid of foliage. Okay. So uh, what we need to do to start with is to drop down a wedge node. And this wedge node is going to uh, get all the areas. So we're going to get areas. Okay. And the first thing that we need to do is determine how many wedge counts we need. All right. This number right here, if you remember from the beginning of this course, we were able to create 
random variations based on a wedge count. So we create, you know, four different values or five different values. In this case, I want to set this wedge count to the amount of items I have in this list here. Okay, so what we can do is we can actually get this number from this particular attribute right here. So I'm going to just right click on this and uh, copy that. And then jump back inside of my top network and we can just paste the relative reference there. Cool, so we get that from the area list. Cool. All right, and then we need to set up one more thing inside of our wedge attribute. So we need to create a new wedge attribute because this is going to contain the path. This is the attribute that's going to contain the string uh, to the path of the object or one of the item in this list that's going to return the path to that. Okay, so what we need to do is give it a name. So we're going to call it area asset like so. And we need to set this to a string because it's going to be a path. And this particular uh, value here, all right, needs to have an element inside of it. Now this is going to be the path to our particular asset in that list. All right, so I'm going to jump up here really quick. So we're just going to take this as an example. So I want to copy this, this parameter there. And I want to drop in here and then I just want to paste that in for this because this will give us the path to that particular item in that list right here. So that is areas asset one. Let's see if, it, if it comes up here. Oh, it's not going to show me. It's weird. There we go. Areas asset one. All right. So what we need to do is we actually need to make that dynamic. Uh, right now it's hard coded because it has that one in there. All right. And so if we were to have multiples in there, let's actually just take a look. Uh, just make it very clear. So this next one, or now this one's going to be area asset two, and this one's going to be area asset one. There we go. All right, so let's get rid of that guy. So we need that number to be dynamic. Okay, so in order to do that, we can actually use the attribute uh, at PDG index. So I'm going to add that on. So what we're going to do is we're going to add on at PDG underscore index, and we're going to add one to it because we need it to start at one, not zero. And the PDG index attribute starts at zero. All right, so with that, we now have a dynamic way to retrieve the paths for all of our particular areas. So let's test this out up here. So let's say I go and uh, just copy and paste this, and we go and change the, uh, the actual curve in here. So let's go and just move this guy around here. Not that it's really necessary that I do this right now, but just help kind of reinforce the concept here. So now I have two areas, all right? And what I want to do is assign those to our list. So I'm going to add another one. Whoops. Let's do that. We'll get area generator, and then we'll add another one, and we'll get area generator one. So now we have two paths that we can test out. All right, so let's jump in here, go to our wedge node, and let's just cook this guy. And look at that, we get two paths. And if we double click on it, we get area generator one, an area generator. Awesome. So now what we need to do is we actually need to bake out the geometry. So to do that, we need to drop down a geometry import node. So this is going to take those paths, all right, and it's basically going to merge them all into a single file for me. All right, and this is going to be the file name. This is going to be the tag. So we're going to call this uh, all areas for the tag, and we should get the upstream result file. That should be fine. So let's test this out. So it cook selected and we get an error. And that's because it's empty or missing the file path. So what we need to do is we actually need to get the path from these work items. All right. And so what we've done is we've actually created an attribute that is associated with this particular path. All right. So what we need to do is we need to come into the geometry import node and set this to a SOP node. All right. And we want to actually put in the name of that attribute. So this is going to be called area asset, like so. And with that, we should be able to cook now. And there we go. So now we actually have geometry in here. And it's all been put into a, a file that we can use. All right. So now we have these two areas. But what I really want to do is I really want to actually have all of these guys in one file. Currently they're in their own separate files, which is fine. Uh, but really what I want to do is I, I want to project all of the areas onto the height field all in one go. Okay, so 
Uh, what I need to do is I need to drop down a wait for all mode. And this will basically combine all these work items into a single partition for me. So if I were to click select this and look at the results, I get an output of a file. Two files, in fact. So I bo have both of those pieces of uh, area geometry. And so I can use a geometry import now at the very end of this again, and we can merge the input geometry. So we're going to say upstream result file this time. Okay. And this one should actually be called all areas like so. And this one should be called just area. There we go. Cool. All right. So let's cook all this. And there we have it. So now we have a single piece of geometry with all of our areas inside of it. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to send all this data into our project height field. Okay, so what I'm going to do is close out the lecture here. And in the next lecture, we'll get that up and running and we'll test it out inside of Unity.